Hello and welcome. In this special BW dialogue, today I have a very special book which is captures the life and times of former president of India and Bharat Natan, late Sri Pranam Mukherjee. And over the last two days, it has become a source of talking point within the political circles, circles given some of the accounts on the Gandhi family and some of the working of the UPA governments. I am joined by Ms. Sharmishtha Mukherjee, who has written this book. Uh, Ms. Mukherjee, thank you so much for your time this evening and talking to us. First up, I want to understand that how did this idea came about? You've written this through Mr. Mukherjee's diary and based on your conversations with him. How did it all come up together to make this book? Well, this is a very old idea and the idea was booted by my father only. That uh, everybody knew, every senior journalist knew that my father has a long habit of keeping diaries and they had been very curious uh, about the diaries. So my father told them many times jokingly that I am going to give the diaries to my daughter and mm -hmm. it is up to her whatever she wants to do with it or not. And similarly, he also said uh, to some other journalists that uh, my daughter is going to write about me one day. Mm -hmm. So I think somewhere he wanted to write, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, to write me to her, wanted me to write about him. Right. And as I went on, uh, I mean, I uh, though the diaries were with me, he made me promise that I am not going to read mm -hmm. the diaries. Right. And even after his post presidential years, when mm -hmm. I, you know, told asked him a few times, Ki, Baba, let's start working on the diaries. So he said, No, you can only read them when I am gone. Okay. So when I read the diaries, and I found them very, very interesting because they chronicle the journey of not just one person, mm -hmm. you know, his own personal journey, but in a way also captures certain you know from his perspective right. from his point of view the, the you know a history of almost you know 50 years of political right. hit events and happenings right. in the so i thought i must you know make use of it and i wrote this book this book is definitely not a publication of his diary because mm -hmm. he has left 51 volumes mm -hmm. and diaries need a different kind of you know structuring editing right. But I thought of mixing it with my personal experience of okay. being his daughter, his personal journey hmm. and his political journey. Yeah, right. Let me talk about the most talked about aspect and that is the mention in the book about him being close to becoming the Prime Minister at more than two occasions. What according to you and even he thought of himself's personality, his political standing that eventually led him to not hold the, the, the office? Uh, well, I, I think uh, after, Rajiv, uh, after Indira Gandhi's assassination, uh, they were flying, Rajiv Gandhi and he and a couple of other political leaders were flying back from Calcutta to Delhi. They were in Calcutta at that time. So, a letter on a rumor was floated right. that my father staked his claim uh, to be the Prime Minister on the virtue of being hmm. uh, the second in the cabinet, but which is just a rumor without having a basis on any truth. My father had written in, written in detail about mm -hmm. it in his own book also and after his passing away, I discovered some handwritten notes, which okay. probably he meant for some memoirs, so where okay. he had given a detailed account of not only happened uh, in the flight, okay. where he vehemently denied that there was any such thing. Okay. And uh, it was proposed in the flight itself okay. that uh, Rajiv will be the Prime Minister. And my father spoken to him also about it, that, mm -hmm. you know, you should be the Prime Minister. Okay. He has given the reasons for it also. Mm -hmm. And also he wrote in detail his own analysis right. of why he was dropped from Raj Rajiv Gandhi's yeah. cabinet. And as per him, you know, he wrote this exact word that in our two, year, two uh, months of working together, because mm -hmm. he was part of the first cabinet of right. uh, Rajiv Gandhi. So in our two months of working together, Rajiv perhaps realized that I am quote unquote, I am a tough nut and I don't uh, uh, follow uh, to the line blindly. Right. So I think which is very true, anybody who was in any kind of contact with my father would mm. uh, knew that you know he had a very strong mind uh, combined right. uh, with political knowledge, understanding, experience of governance, uh, uh, thorough, meticulous homework. Mm. So it is very difficult to uh, for such a person, you know, mm. to follow anybody's line blindly. Right. And you know, many such occurrences happened. Uh, which I have given uh, in my books, at where perhaps Rajiv felt, did not feel too comfortable in terms okay. of working with him. And that could also be mm -hmm. the uh, reason of that complete lack of trust uh, as far as Sonia Gandhi was concerned towards my father. Okay. So, you talked about, I want to understand the relation 
his relation with the Gandhis. In your book, you mentioned that you once asked him about his resentment for his strained relationship uh, with Rajiv Gandhi for his worst phase of political career. And then later on, he supported Sonia Gandhi's bid for the Congress party president. Mm-hmm. How did he see the Gandhis for the Congress family, for its cohesion? What was the relationship like? You know, Indira Gandhi uh, was my father's mentor. And if there is one pers- person to mm-hmm. whom my father's personal loyalty lied, right. that it began and ended with Indira Gandhi. Okay. After Indira, he served the party, but not an individual. And uh, definitely, you know, he was a hardcore congressman. And for some reason, you know, again, it's elaborated in the book. Mm -hmm. I mean, after Narsimha Rao, you know, there was a lot of hue and cry to replace uh, uh, Sitaram Kesri uh, by Sonia Gandhi as Congress president. Uh, My father also supported that because uh, he felt that uh, on one hand, Sitaram Kesri was perhaps not Mm -hmm. um, running the party as it should be. Right. Secondly, he also realized that uh, Tan Janpath, you know, he felt that it remained a source of power, mm-hmm. a parallel power, even after Rajiv Gandhi's death, and mm-hmm. even an astute politician like P.V. Narsimha Rao could not diminish. Right. So, what he felt that it is better to bring it, channelize mm-hmm. the authority along with responsibility and accountability. Right. You know, that is the reason he felt that Sonia Gandhi should be. Uh, made uh, Congress president and it will, it will be good for the party, you know, it will also uh, kind of uh, 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 neutralize hmm. the top level factionalism within the party. Right. You mentioned the, about the Kotri culture as well during the Rajiv Gandhi era. During the UPA years and some people even say that that culture still prevails resulting in Congress dismal performance in these 10 years. What was that culture like during those 10 years of UPA? Did that impact? the working of the government, any account? You know, as far as my father, in Mm. fact, one of his, you know, early diaries before Sonia Gandhi Mm. uh, became uh, Congress president, it was on the process, you know, he wrote pros and cons. Mm. And among pros, he wrote what he thought about Sonia's strength. Mm -hmm. Among cons, he wrote that, you know, he feared that due to lack of her political experience, she might become dependent on a coterie Mm -hmm. as her husband did. And... But later on, you know, this turned out to be unfounded because as per him, that Sonia listened to everybody but did not follow anybody blindly. And as per him, the Gandhi family, that is Sonia and her two children, they do not trust completely anybody other than themselves. So, uh, as for my father, there was no coterie as such around Sonia Gandhi. Okay. And you mentioned the kids. Let me talk about Rahul Gandhi. Uh, he started in 2004. What were your father's initial reactions in his early years when he started in 2004? And is there any one particular moment or incident where his distrust in his ability to lead the country or maybe even the party touched the new eye? Any particular moment? Well, there was uh, uh, very few references of uh, Rahul Gandhi in my father's diaries. And what I felt that during UPA 1 and UPA 2, mm-hmm. there were not too many references uh, of Rahul except for him coming to see him and where he described him as very courteous, full of right. questions. And But I think, you know, his faith in Rahul was really shaken and that famous, infamous mm-hmm. uh, trashing the ordinance uh, mm-hmm. where he, Rahul Gandhi uh, said that it should be turned off and it should be uh, in mm-hmm. 2003 and it should be th- thrown mm-hmm. away. And so my father felt that it was a very, very wrong move. and. Uh, Prime Minister was uh, visiting, it was just before the elections right. and, uh, and much later in 2015, by then I had already joined politics. So one day talking to me about various results, what various reasons uh, why Congress had reached such an abyss of you know just having 44 seats. He said that one of the reasons and the final nail in, in the coffin was Rahul Gandhi's tearing of the uh, ordinance. Okay. Now I want to understand that Popular, contrary to popular belief, you've mentioned that Dr. Manmohan Singh was not a weakling, according to your father. How did he regard his tenure as the Prime Minister and his working relationship with him when he was the Prime Minister? You know, let me give you a very interesting fact which uh, not too many hmm. channels have picked up. My father as President wanted to confer Bharat Ratna to Dr. Manmohan Singh. 
and uh, he and he has given the reasons for this but you know during uh, dr manmohan singh is a world renowned economist right. and during a, i mean uh, a period where right. the whole world hmm. was suffering from a global recession you right. know and after that the euro uh, zone crisis dr singh led indian economy and uh, uh, not only strengthened it but you know like it's really flourished you know right. he was the uh, Uh, was, the whole process of economic reforms was started during uh, B. V. Narasimha right. Rao's time when Dr. Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister, uh, sorry, the Finance Minister, mm -hmm. and then he carried on with. So he wanted to actually confer Bharat Ratna to Dr. Manmohan Singh, and as per his diary, he uh, wrote that I talked to he talked to the Cabinet Secretary to talk to Pulak Chatterjee okay. to ascertain views of Sonia Gandhi about conferring. Uh, Bharat Ratna to Dr. Manmohan Singh. Okay. But after that, unfortunately, there is no other reference. That's right. So okay. I really don't know what hmm. transpired. Okay. Whether Pulak Chatterjee, he must have talked to Sonia Gandhi. Hmm. But uh, what transpired after hmm. that? Why Dr. Manmohan Singh was not given the hmm. Bharat Ratna? I do not have the answer for that. Okay. And as an administrator, his stint in various top-notch portfolios, top-notch ministries, anything that he, any policy initiative that he was really proud of, or any initiatives where he thought could have handled better or maybe even regretted there are many okay. there are many you know i mean his diaries are full of such okay. things i have given a few references okay. in the book and i don't want to Absolutely. tell that because otherwise <laughs> right. otherwise you know like he i, I mean hmm. if i wanted to you know i did really did it, i hmm. mean in this book i you know touched primarily upon my uh, about prana mukherjee his political journey yeah. okay. i did not touch upon too much about Uh, him as an ad administrator or as a parliamentarian, okay. because that would have taken another volume to write. Okay. So, but still, there are you know uh, references okay. of you know uh, very interesting events that you know how the government solved uh, you know the crisis management. There are a few in interesting events. Uh, where readers will read about them. My last question to you: A lot has been said about the chemistry with the current Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Pranab Mukherjee. What is that? that mr mukherjee saw in modi in his views that probably india's political landscape has not seen for quite some time well firstly i mean i think mr my father believed that uh, you know mr modi is a professional politician and he told me many times and he also wrote in his diary that after indira gandhi he, he felt that narendra modi is the only prime minister who had the ability to feel the pulse of the people Right. of india so strongly right. you know which i think every successful politician must have so as per him after indira gandhi narendra modi was the only prime minister okay i mean he didn't say politician but the right. only prime minister to have that feel okay. and he also wrote in his diary that he he felt that mr modi has a very professional approach to state craft mm -hmm. and there was of course a very strong personal chemistry between the two uh, right. two, two leaders and also lot of per mutual personal uh, regards right. and but other than that i think also which uh, defined mm -hmm. the professional relationship between the president mukherjee and mm -hmm. prime minister modi was my father's um, interpretation of the role of the constitutional mm -hmm. role and the constitutional limitations Absolutely. of the uh, of the president and he there is a very interesting uh, story narrated to me by, by mr modi mm -hmm. himself Yep. then when he first went to meet baba as prime minister designate so he touched baba's feet and mm. he sought his guidance so baba told him very clearly that we belong to two different ideologies the people of india have given you the mandate to rule governments is the mm. responsibility of mm. the cabinet led by the prime minister right. that is your job i am not going to interfere right. if you need any uh, any guidance in constitution constitutional mm. matters mm. i will definitely help you huh. while narrating this story to me mr modi told me ki dada ke liye ye baat kehna bahut badi baat thi so i think from huh. this you know it becomes apparent that huh. there was a openness and honesty in huh. between the prime minister and the president huh. from the very beginning and despite being you know two different ideologies huh. that's why they could you know work together as a team just a quick connected question to this you mentioned that when prime minister first won in 2014 your father raised the question that whether he be able to maintain or social cohesion that something yes in his diaries hmm. he uh, was uh, worried about this that you know he wrote that uh, the 
strength and the continuation of the governance is uh, is uh, assured but what about so social cohesion mm -hmm. i am worried okay. and about this you know i mean he as president you know he has an immutable platforms he has spoken about the increasing polarization of the society without naming any particular person or without naming any particular incident right. or without blaming any particular uh, institution or government he right. has raised this question you know many times which are there all in the public domain right. and he talked about the pluralistic secular tolerant values of right. india of the diversity of the culture uh, so i mean you know these are all there in the public right. domain so that's right. why i did not repeat it absolutely just one quick last take on congress questioning the timing of the book and probably you joining a new party uh, uh, what is the timing of the book you know my father uh, 11 december is my father's uh, Okay. Birth right. anniversary, and it was decided much before that right. it will be released here. Okay. And if the Congress, if the election result happened to come at that time, I mean, sorry, I can't help. <laughs> you know, I can't change my father's birth anniversary. And <laughs> I have quit politics. I am just not interested in politics. And getting a Rajya Sabha seat or even a cabinet post or even a any position in the party, any any political party is not my path to Nirvana. I am very clear about it. and otherwise people are most welcome to believe what they want to believe mr mukherjee thank you so much thank for your you time so this much. evening and being so kind thank, thank you so much